Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today Around Kansas starts off with this year's annual Kansas Notable Books list. Then learn how Kansas farm boy Clyde Cessna came to create the Cessna Aircraft Company. Next, find out why Kansas is almost universally synonymous with home. And we'll end with the story of Dr. Curtis E. Munn, a pioneer doctor in Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Good morning. It's Wednesday. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And this is Around Kansas, and this is the 21st of June. Wow. First day of summer. Yeah. Is this the day you can sit an egg on its end, or is that the... I think that's spring, spring, maybe. Never mind. Yeah. Ne so. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. We don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. You can go ahead, stand an egg on it, and see what happens. I won't be responsible. <laughs> well, you know, Blame you Frank if it, it on end, if it's hard boiled. <laughs> Blame Frank if it rolls off the table and squashes or whatever. So. So, my exciting news I got a new wheel on my wheelbarrow because my. The wheel went flat, and Jake put one on there, but it was too small. So I'm, I'm always bumping into stuff when I'm, you know, <laughs> pushing buffalo chips around the yard or whatever. So he calls me one day, and he said, you know, get the measurement off that wheelbarrow. So I'm out, out there, and he brings home this beautiful big wheelbarrow wheel. And he even puts it on for me, Frank. Wow. What a man. What a man. So I post this on one bolt. <laughs> so I put this, well, it was a little more complicated than that. So I put this on Facebook that he'd got me this, this uh, new wheel. And so Michael can share this with you. So my friend, Mark Younger does a Photoshop. You remember the iconic image of the woman in Kansas pushing the wheelbarrow full of um, buffalo chips, you know, and she's a pioneer woman. Well, Mark put my face in that, you know, so that appears on Facebook. Well, um, Steve Packle back in New Jersey had just said, well, there's an orange wheel on sale on eBay, and he had posted that. So then Steve took that iconic image and put the orange wheel on the wheelbarrow. So there's me, the pioneer woman, <laughs> pushing the wheelbarrow buffalo chips with the orange wheel. <laughs> Oh Destined my. to go down in history. Yeah. So what have you been doing? <laughs> well, I've been pushing buffalo chips around the yard. Yeah. So anyway. This no, is I, what my life has come to, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. Well, I did have a wheelbarrow <laughs> a few years ago, and it had you know, a balloon tire on the front, which went flat. Right. Now, I've got one of those nice hard okay. tires that won't go flat. Yeah. So I love it. I did find one of those. Yes, I did. Oh, and that's, that's what's nice. on there now. So while I've been pushing buffalo chips around the yard, you actually <laughs> live in this century, Frank. So <laughs> tell me about the exciting stuff going on with your app. Frank has an app. I have a wheelbarrow. Frank has an app. That's I, well, I don't have an app. The radio station has an app. The radio station station is WREN, Wren Internet Radio, and uh, it, it, anyway, we finally got our own app, uh, and it is in your Play Store, and it, it works on all the Android devices and all that. So you go to the Play Store and just look for uh, Wren Oldies Radio, that's what you need to search for. That comes up and you download it, it's absolutely free, puts an icon on your screen, and as soon as you hit that, Wren comes up and starts playing the oldies of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And That uh, would be 1950s, 60s, yes. and 70s for my friends. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it, it, it's pretty exciting that, that we finally got that app. You can also go to wrenradio.net and, and do the same thing. But, so if I figure out where my Play Store is, I didn't even know I had a Play Store. If I figure that out... <laughs> While I'm pushing my wheelbarrow around the yard, I can be playing the oldies. <laughs> oh, my. So, <laughs> what a great country. Uh -huh. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Supply. 
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego is driven by the spirit of American ingenuity. Come in for a new Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV. If we don't have exactly what you want, we'll find it for you. And we also have a great selection of used cars. We make sure you have an easy, fun, and transparent sales experience that saves you time and money. But if you want high-pressure salesmen and hours spent in the finance office, you'll just have to go elsewhere. Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're making car buying great again. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. And here we are again. So, I see that you are holding a book. With Buffalo Bill on the cover. How good can it get? <laughs> um, Kansas Notable Books. The Kansas Notable Book List has come out. And I, at one time, was honored with a Kansas Notable book. The um, book that... Michelle Martin and I wrote on Kansas Forts and Bases. Our friend Rod Beamer has had a Kansas Notable book. Um, I think uh, Tom Averill. I think uh, uh, a lot of friends have Kansas Notable books. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, but you got an app, Frank, so I don't want to hear it. So my friend Michelle Martin um, had seen this one and knew I had to have it. And this is, of course, presenting Buffalo Bill, the man who invented the Wild West. I love this. But that is one of the Kansas notable books this year. So the book list will tell you all about it and who the, uh, the recognized authors are this year. But go out and find yourself a Kansas notable book and um, enjoy some summer reading. Hmm. Is this a... Uh... But in most of the bookstores, of course, you can go to the state capitol, too, you can, if you're in Topeka uh -huh. and in the gift shop, and I'm sure they exactly. have that. Exactly. Can that's I have a, this one? No. That's inscribed to me. Look, Frank. See? Oh, and there Deb. Deb. Okay. It does not say Frank. No. It does not well, say I Frank anywhere. It out. That's right. The Kansas Notable Books List is the annual recognition of 15 outstanding titles, either written by Kansans or about a Kansas-related topic. The Kansas Notable Book List highlights our lively contemporary writing community and encourages readers to enjoy some of the best writing of the authors among us. A committee of academics, librarians, and authors of previous notable books identifies quality titles from among those published the previous year, and the state librarian makes the selection for the final list. A medal awards ceremony honors the books and their authors. Kansas Notable Books is a project of the Kansas Center for the Book, a program of the State Library. Throughout the year, the State Library promotes and encourages the promotion of all the titles on that year's list as literary events and among librarians and booksellers. This year's honorees are Ghost Sign, Poems from White Buffalo by Al Ortolani, Melissa Fight Johnson, Adam Jameson, and J.T. Knoll. Green City, How One Community Survived a Tornado and Rebuilt for a Sustainable Future by Alan Drummond. Hero of the Empire, The Boer War, A Daring Escape and the Making of Winston Churchill by Candace Millard. Hurt People, a novel by Coach Smith. Iowa Life, Reservation and Reform, 1837 through 1860 by Greg Olson. The Last Wild Places of Kansas, Journeys into Hidden Landscapes by George Frazier. Lost and Gone Forever, a novel of Scotland Yard's Murder Squad by Alex Grecian. The Memory of Lemon, a novel by Judith Ferdig. Mike Torres, a baseball biography by Jorge Iber. A Nest of Hornets by Robert Krenzel. Never Enough Flamingos by Janelle Diller. Fog, the most influential man in basketball by Scott Morrow Johnson. Presenting Buffalo Bill, The Man Who Invented the Wild West by Candace Fleming. The Small Town Midwest, Resilience and Hope in the 21st Century by Julianne Couch. We at Around Kansas encourage you to grab a good book, a Kansas notable book, and do some summer reading. Hey, I'm Clark Victory. I grew up right here on this little ranch near Chelsea, Oklahoma. Uh, roped and ranched all my life and uh, 
a few years ago I had an injury that created a what they call a frozen shoulder in layman's terms. It got to the point that I, I couldn't reach, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything. After speaking with the surgeon in Tulsa, he finally told me that he could make my uh, shoulder better if he did surgery, but he absolutely couldn't fix it. I decided that, you know, maybe I better listen to my friend John, and, and I called Kansas Regenerative Medical Center. I talked to Patrick Farley and was just excited about the whole aspect of going up there and having the opportunity to focus on getting better. The next morning at 8.30, went into the clinic, did the stem cell replacement. By 12.30, my wife and I had had lunch and was driving back to Chelsea. I feel better. I, we work around here. Some days we work pretty hard around here, and like any older guy does, I get pretty sore, pretty tired, but my right shoulder doesn't get sore. It's, it's like a baby's arm. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. <sighs> you going to start this one? I can. Okay. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> We're back. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the 19th century. Frank is, you know, 20th century and beyond. You know, he even goes to outer space. <laughs> so while I talk about my everything I've got in this show, I think, is 19th century. But you have a more modern story, again, well, with the aircraft industry and one of the biggest names in the industry with Clyde Cessna. Cessna. Forever associated Cessna with Kansas. Aircraft. Yes. Uh, well, Cessna and Frederick, and, you know, they were the two big pioneers in the aircraft industry in the state of Kansas. And so, anyway, the, the story about Clyde Cessna is going to kind of surprise you at the end. I'm not going to give that away. But uh, you will be astounded by that. And so I don't want to say any more because I'll, I'll, I'll really kind of give it away. But um, Cessna built his first uh, plane, if I remember rightly now from my story, since I read it, uh, was 1910. But he left Kansas for a while. Uh, but he missed actually being involved in the everyday manufacture of mm -hmm. aircraft. This is a Kansas profile from Ron Wilson director of the Huck Boyd National Institute for Rural Development at Kansas State University. The world's most popular airplanes. That's one description of the planes built by the Cessna Aircraft Company, maker of more light aircraft than any company in the world. It was all started by a rural Kansas farm boy. He is today's Kansas profile. Clyde Cessna was born in Iowa. When he was one year old, his family moved to Kansas and lived on a farm near the rural community of Rago in Kingman County. Rago is unincorporated. It's located east of the town of Spivey, population 79. Now, that's rural. As a farm boy, Clyde learned to be a good mechanic and handyman. He helped area farmers with their equipment and then branched out into working on automobiles. He became an auto mechanic and then a car salesman in Enid, Oklahoma. One day in 1910, he went to Oklahoma City and saw what was called an air circus, an exhibition by a group of touring stunt pilots. He was so intrigued by the airplanes that he quit his job and moved to New York to take a job in aircraft construction. He learned the craft of airplane manufacturing and then moved back to Oklahoma to build his own planes. Cessna crashed on his first flight attempt, but made his first successful flight in 1911, eight years after the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk. With that flight, he became the first person to build and fly a powered aircraft in the heartland of America between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. Clyde Cessna tried to generate income by flying exhibitions, but money was scarce in those times. He finally moved his family back to the farm in Kansas, where the only building still standing was a barn. Believe it or not, the family moved into that barn temporarily. The family literally lived in the hayloft while Clyde worked on trying to build better airplanes. Each year, he built a new and improved model. 
1916, Cessna had a unique opportunity. A Wichita car building company named Jones 6 invited him to build an airplane in its auto factory to publicize the company. So Cessna came to Wichita and built a new plane with the words Jones 6 painted on the wings in giant letters, which could be read from a thousand feet below. It was the first airplane ever built in Wichita, Kansas, the first of more than a quarter million airplanes, which would help earn Wichita the name of Air Capital. Cessna continued to build and upgrade his planes. In 1917, his plane named Comet set the U.S. national speed record of 124 miles per hour. After World War I, Cessna joined with two legendary partners, Lloyd Stearman and Walter Beach, who was also a test pilot. In 1925, they formed a company called Travel Air Manufacturing. This company became one of the nation's leading airplane manufacturers. Two years later, Clyde Cessna set out on his own to build a high-performance single-wing plane that could outperform the biplanes of the time. His monoplane model would be able to reach speeds of 145 miles per hour and fly more than seven hours in length, a remarkable achievement for the time. However, the Great Depression hit and the company put the business on hold. Clyde Cessna went back to the farm, but his nephew, Dwayne Wallace, was still working in aviation. Dwayne encouraged Mr. Cessna to restart the business, and together they did so. Clyde retired in 1936, but his nephew would continue to build the company. The company grew and changed through the years. For example, the 1956 Cessna Skylark would outsell every other light airplane in the world. Today, the Cessna Aircraft Company is considered one of the world's largest makers of small aircraft. The world's most popular airplanes? That was one description of the planes built by the Cessna Aircraft Company. And there's more. Before revitalizing Cessna, Dwayne Wallace had been working for none other than Clyde's former partner, Walter Beach, who founded his own airplane company. More on that, coming later. Fort Wallace stood on the frontier in the midst of the Plains Indians Wars on a major stage route and rail line. Beside the 1865 Stagecoach Station, a modern museum with thousands of artifacts tell that story, like the fossil of a 40-foot plesiosaur is suspended from the ceiling. Located on Highway 40, midway between Hayes and Colorado Springs, the Fort Wallace Museum is as welcome a sight today as the fort itself in the 1860s. Discover the fightingest fort in the West. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Have you ever noticed how Kansas is almost universally synonymous with home? There is our state song, of course, penned by Dr. Brewster Higley, with music by Dan Kelly. Home on the range is one lonely lost man's prayer. Oh, give me a home. And simultaneously, an expression of gratitude for this place he had found to call home, Kansas. Then there was Dorothy. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Just click your heels, Dorothy. While she had longed for adventure, the Emerald City with its bright lights and bustling streets did not compare with the farmstead and family she had left behind. Kansas has been settled by folks seeking a new home. Exodusters long for land and flock to the prairies. Soldiers, weary of war, wanted to farm and raise crops and cows and kids and came to Kansas. Europeans, cramped and crowded, beset with unrest and oppression, came to the promised land, Kansas. We are the very heart of America's heartland, quintessentially American. There is even a town called Home in Kansas. Located in Marshall County, Home, or Home City, was founded in 1874 with the post office in, you guessed it, someone's home. Home lies along Highway 36, the Pony Express Highway, and is on the Union Pacific Railroad line. How much more typically Kansas can you get? The Homestead Act is responsible for many Kansas staking claims and putting down roots. Of course, rail lines and fences displace many of the peoples who already called Kansas home, if not calling it Kansas. 
There is almost no mention of Kansas in which the word home does not have a role. Kansas, a good place to call home. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Back again, and my co-host here is holding yet again another book. <laughs> I am out to save the world, for, you know, <laughs> books. Okay, I was at the Order of the Indian Wars in Denver a few weeks ago. Dr. Jake and I were out there, and of course, it's a gathering of old friends and, and incredible scholars, one of which is Paul Hedron. And Paul is retired from the National Park Service, like so many, um, worked for the National Park Service, like so many distinguished historians. The National Park Service is a, a great place if you're interested in pursuing um, some hands-on history. Uh, it's very competitive, but that's the place to go. Well, Paul's um, new book, um, The Powder River, The Disastrous Opening of the Great Sioux War, is a wonderful book with a lot of Kansas connections, a lot of them. And one of them is right here in Topeka with Dr. Curtis Munn. And the Munn name um, was a very uh, well-known um would have been a contemporary of Hiram Price Dillon. Dr. Munn and his son Lynn would have been contemporaries of Dillon's. So uh, this is, I just can't um, tell you enough good stuff about this book. Paul um, is just handsome, dapper gentleman, just such a, just such a gentleman. Lives up in Omaha, um, so not too far away. And uh, it's a really cool connection, really cool connection. When historian Paul Hedron was researching the Great Sioux War, he found the reports of assistant surgeon Curtis E. Munn invaluable. Paul called Munn's reports both precise and vivid. The resulting book, newly released from University of Oklahoma Press, Powder River, Disastrous Opening of the Great Sioux War, is itself precise and vivid. The most famous event of 1876, of course, is the annihilation of Custer's command at the Little Bighorn in June. But that battle on the greasy grass was but one incident of the warfare engulfing the northern plains. The accounts are riveting, more so because of Dr. Munn's contribution, both on the field and in recording the events. Paul shared one incident that occurred in March following a fight and arduous travel. The beleaguered column reached Fort Reno, Wyoming, where men and horses were fed and warmed. Munn had been telling his wounded soldiers they would be properly tended, encouraging them through the miserable journey. The good doctor was livid to find the hospital was only a wet tent with no stove and one cot. He went to work and within a short time procured stoves and tents and saw to it that his men were comfortable. Just the sort of doctor we would all hope to have. Dr. Munn, a Harvard grad, served in the Civil War and was a pioneer doctor in Kansas. He was the bacteriologist for the State Board of Health, a lecturer on hygiene and sanitation at the State University, and a lecturer on bacteriology at the Kansas State Medical College. His son, Lynn, became a respected doctor in Topeka as well, and it was Lynn's wife, Lily Gordon Munn, who was responsible for the Munn Memorial at the entrance to Gage Park. The Munns, both doctors and their wives, rest in historic Topeka Cemetery. For more of Dr. Munn's accounts of the Indian Wars, find the book Powder River in all the usual outlets. We have to go. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you.
tell you Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part.